today we are talking about neurodiversity and your business. So I am here with the head coach of the Alchemical Business Accelerator, traditional astrologer, fate and free will coach, Robin Langford, who is on the Dirty Alchemy team. Say hi, Robin. Hello. We just wanted to do a quick check-in because neurodiversity is so common in entrepreneurship. And if you think you're neurodiverse or you know you're neurodiverse, we wanted to give some strategies around what you can do in your business and you, how you can support your clients. Really quickly, Robin, can you give me a description or explanation of what neurodiversity even is? I can. I would say the best way to think about it is it's any type of thought process that deviates from the normal experience. And the reason that it's so difficult for people to recognize that they are neurodiverse is because everybody thinks that their experience is normal. And so what can be really useful is to do a little research into it. And um, I really like sensoryhealth.org. They have a bunch of checklists that you can go through and it'll help you identify if you have sensory processing disorder or if you may be on the spectrum. Another a book that I really like is um, Divergent Mind, um, and they have a bunch of checklists also. And if you've ever had difficulty understanding the way other people react to the world, um, or you've had people say that you're weird, or you're too sensitive, or you're scattered, or why can't you do this? It's easy. Like if you've heard people say those things to you, my guess is that you probably are neurodivergent, and it would be beneficial for you to find out the current label that would be applicable for you, not because the label matters and not because you need to be fixed, but because it'll help you learn how to interact with the world in a completely different way that's way more useful for you. Yeah, and so this is really um, uh, important to me right now just because I was recently diagnosed with ADHD, which was actually shocking to me because my brother was very classically... ADHD as a kid. And I was like, I'm definitely not ADHD. I did extremely well in school. I have a degree in physics. I got four point whatever GPAs, all the things. I have a great a business that's going well. And then I find out I'm also ADHD. And so if you are someone who had maybe depression or anxiety in the past, or you you have to do certain things, to, like maybe you do really well in work, but you like can't handle normal things in life, like going to the grocery store, remembering to do your dishes. And like, it might be something you want to look into. Hi, echoing what Robin said, Divergent Minds is such a great book. If you are a woman and you think you might be neurodiverse, it will blow your mind up not only in terms of how you can support yourself, also just the history of um, psychiatry and psychology and how it is, wasn't done by women or on women. So why would it be supportive of women? If you know you're neurodiverse, so you think you might be neurodiverse, what are some ways that people can support themselves in their businesses? So the first and most important thing is going to sound, you're going to think, well, obviously, and you're only going to think that if you're neurodiverse. I'm just going to say it like that. <laughs> You should not try to fit yourself in to the model that you've been taught in school or that everybody else tells you should work. Like it's probably not going to work for you the way it works for normal people. And so one of those things might be your schedule might need to be different. Like you might need to take a break to go for a walk, or you might need to take a break to take a nap because you are over people, or you might need to only schedule calls with other people during certain times of the day, because that's when your brain is functioning in a way that makes it easier for you to do. Or you might need to only talk to two people a day, right? Or there's just a bunch of different things that you're going to know work for you. And you've probably already figured out for yourself. It's, they're called accommodations and you've probably already made them. And people will probably have said something along the lines of, well, why do you do it that way? Right. And you're going to be like, well, what do you mean? <laughs> because that's, that's the way that it works for me. And those are the types of things that I want people to lean into. And I see so many people trying to resist it. They're like, well, I really wish I only had to work in the morning. Cause that's when I feel like I can focus, but I need to do blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, but you own your own business and you don't really need to do blah, blah, blah. Then you can do it at another time. Oh no. Everybody else does it this way. And I'm like, mm, maybe they do, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. So paying attention to that, because there are really and truly so many different things that you can do that can help depending on what your neurodiversity is. And so first, just go to a checklist like DSM, the DSM-5, you can use that as a checklist or just look for 
checklist for autism, checklist for sensory processing disorder, checklist for ADHD in adults, in women, like add that keyword to your yeah. search um, so that Google gives you the right thing, <laughs> but do that and then see, get a name for what you identify with and yeah. so that you know what to search for. And then you can find really specific actionable things that'll help you in major ways. So we just recorded a podcast, Robin and I, that goes so much more in detail on this. So definitely go check that out. That'll be at thedirtyalchemy.com slash blog. And we'll link to it in the, uh, down below the video. Um, if you want to hear like our stories and details of all the different neurodiversities and very specific strategies that you can use. I mean, specific ones that I've found is being able to listen to things instead of watch things or read things so that I can pace around while I do it. Or I like, I have a light on right now, but I usually like work in a completely dark room. And usually like I have to move from situate. I'm like never actually sitting at this desk. I'm usually like on this like lounger back here or like squatting over here or like laying on the bed in the other room and just really leaning into what you intuitively want to want to do is <laughs> it's probably the, the best answer for a lot of us. Yeah. I mean, like some of the common ones that I, I see a lot of people need are like noise canceling headphones. Um, mm, those, yeah. those tend to be really useful for people or being able to move while they work if they're ADHD or being having a lot of uh, movement related things like having a squeezy ball or having the things that fidgets are called fidgets to help them focus during calls or doing something else while they're trying to have a conversation with a client. Like if you're a coach, I just, sometimes if I'm having trouble focusing, I'll start drawing so that my physical body is doing something that allows my, my brain to focus better on words. And yeah. all of those are useful. <laughs> and then uh, a few things we talked about um, for supporting if, if you have clients that are neurodiverse is you mentioned Robin in the, in the podcast to first ask how to accommodate people, right? <laughs> like, just like, yeah. ask, how can I accommodate you? Um, and also think about a bunch of different learning styles. What were some of those that we mentioned? Yeah. So people are auditory, visual, or tactile learners usually. And if they're auditory learners, it means that they need to be able to hear it. If they're visual learners, it means that they need visual reference and video could be very helpful for them. Auditory, they would need audio only without the visual and uh, potentially. And the visual learners need something that's written down because they're not able to process it the information auditorily. And so having your content available in all three formats is very inclusive and is going to cover a lot of different things for people. Yes. And I mean, of course we want to support our students. And if you're just thinking about business strategy, this is also smart because it'll be make it more likely for a student to be able to get through your program which means they can actually get the amazing result that you're promising them, which means that they can give you amazing testimonials and refer people to you and do case studies and all the things. So on both sides of it, it's definitely something you want to think about doing and it is so possible to do. Thank you so much for being on here with, with me, Robin. I know you hate being on video, so we love seeing your face. <laughs> and go listen to that episode. If this resonates with you, we go so deep into it. And if you want support further, and the Alchemical Business Accelerator, which is open right now, uh, you can join us and learn how to build a really amazing foundation for your business, whether you're neurotypical or neurodiverse, so that you can have more time back, you can systematize things, have a uh, hire a team that supports you. Robin is a head coach within the program. You get weekly calls with me. We have amazing bonuses right now. Um, so all you have to do is you can just book a call with me and we'll talk about it to see if you're in the right spot in your business, if the program is right for you. And see you next week, everyone. 